Spider-Man Homecoming. And if you're a Sony Pictures, third time's a charm. With a little bit of help from Marvel Studios and Disney, Spider-Man Homecoming is exactly what a Spider-Man film needed to be. And I'm not knocking the previous incarnations or disrespecting them, but from the many differences, the main one that sticks out is Homecoming is part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And without tapping too much into the origin stories from the previous Spider-Man films, from how he got his powers to where he, where he stands now with life and post-Uncle Ben tragedy, Spider-Man has already been established twice. So keeping that in mind and skipping ahead, we jump right into the action. So fresh off the heels of Captain America's Civil War, Spider-Man finds himself at a crossroads. He was so amped up from the airport incident that he wants to do more with the Avengers, if possible, as an Avenger. But Tony Stark doesn't think he's ready. He suggests to Peter Parker to stay low to the ground and to continue helping the little guy. So under protest, which he never tells Tony Stark, Peter Parker takes the advice and continues on with his school life, with his home life with Aunt May, and his crime fighting life. At the same time, he keeps his eyes and ears open for a bigger game, and that's where he encounters the Vulture. And I gotta say, the Vulture, probably the most intense villain we've seen in a long time in the MCU. Probably, personally, I'll say since Loki in the first Thor film. Everything Vulture ever says, you believe what he's gonna do, you believe what he says. Almost intimidating. Matter of fact, he's very intimidating. Michael Keane did such an amazing job in the role that I wish he can play more villains in other films. It's rare for him, but I think after this performance, and if I'm, if I'm not the only one, reach out to Michael Keaton and ask him to try to play more villains because he does such a great job. The film never has a dull moment. and It has action, it has comedy, and both balance out really well, so there's not too much in one spot, there isn't too much of the other in another spot. It's spread out evenly from start to finish. The character development is amazing. We do hear a lot of familiar names, but most of them are played by different faces, new new cast members, and they all do a great job in their individual roles. And what can we expect? What's after Homecoming? Of course, there's Avengers Infinity War. Before we get there is Black Panther, and before that is Thor Ragnarok. So there's a lot more coming. All roads lead to Infinity War. There's already talks about a Spider-Man Homecoming sequel. And if you kept up with that news, it picks up literally minutes after the end of Spider-Man Homecoming 1. So if you're wondering, definitely go check this out. It's a must-see. It was worth the right, worth the wait, excuse me and a tremendous addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. After Infinity War, we'll see, or we'll have a better idea what to expect moving forward because change is coming, as mentioned from Marvel Studios, from Kevin Feige, that there is change coming, not to mention more additions. It's, it's just growing bigger and bigger. Anyone involved, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe at this point would be probably a great boost in their career just to be acknowledged, just to be recognized that if you can pull this off here you can pretty much do any kind of role elsewhere and those are my thoughts go check it out Spider-Man Homecoming and on a final note I caught this film last night and upon leaving the theater I I learned the news of the unfortunate passing of Joan Lee, the wife of Stan Lee, the man responsible for many, many comic book Marvel characters that he brought to life, not only comics, but also was an executive producer, a consultant, or producer himself in many of these films, not all related to the MCU. But uh, uh, I send out my prayers and condolences to the Lee family 
going through this really difficult and hard time. I didn't mean to end this review on a, on a sad note, but I didn't want to go on not acknowledging what transpired from enjoying a great film only to be aware of such sad news. So, Joan Lee, may she rest in peace and be sure to check back with me and good old JM. Leave a comment below. Did you watch the film and what did you think of it? What other characters should be involved in upcoming sequels? Don't forget to subscribe and click that like button. It'll help me out a lot. Until then, stay safe and be good.